on uh, ship potential in India, you're at the right place. So um, we'll uh, wait for a few, a minute or two until everyone uh, is here. So you don't, everyone can watch the webinar from the beginning. But um, in the meantime, on, on, I'll give you uh, ship. I'll give you uh, some uh, housekeeping announcements. One of them is that you will get the recording and the video recording and the presentations uh, to this webinar. Um, so, um, you know, that's, uh, you'll certainly get an email probably early next week with uh, the recording and the presentations. And um, also I'd like to let you know that you can actually post questions on the Q&A box. So this is, uh, your, this is your first webinar. Take some time and look at the uh, toolbar, which is at the bottom and you can see um, a, uh, an icon there that reads Q and A. And in that icon, you can essentially send questions whilst the uh, speakers are delivering the presentations. So, um, right, other than that, well, we have a, a kind of like a, a tradition here at uh, ATA Insights, and we um, ask everyone who is uh, connected to say where they are connecting from. So I am here with my colleague, Anna, who you can't see, but she definitely can, well, she can't see you either. She knows that you're there, but she's, uh, you know, making sure that everything works well um, uh, from Madrid. So we're connecting from Madrid. So yeah, let us know uh, through the, uh, the chat function where you're connecting from. And uh, right, so I think, um, well, now let me yeah. see what's the time. I think it's probably time to uh, start with the webinar. So um, once again, welcome to the webinar. The heat is on. Uh, solar heat in industrial processes potential in India. So um, let's start with, uh, I'd like uh, you know, each of the speakers to briefly introduce themselves. So uh, Anna, thank you for taking down the the image. So um, let's start with uh, Jai Deep. Jai Deep, could you please briefly introduce yourself? You are muted, by the way. So. Hello. Uh, good evening to everybody in India. Good afternoon in Europe and good morning to the rest of the country. This is Jai Deep Malviya, the Secretary General, Solar Thermal Federation of India, and also heading the project for the solar payback undertaken for the German Solar Association. Thank you very much, uh, Jaide, for the presentation. Jan, would you like to briefly introduce yourself? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay, yes. My name is Jan Knack. I work for the German Solar Association. I'm calling in from Berlin. And we have the pleasure to organize a project on solar thermal process heat, which is also covering India, where I will say a few words about in my presentation. Thank you very much, Jan. Um, next, uh, if uh, Dattareya Ganekar, if you could please, uh, Dattareya, if you could introduce yourself briefly, please. You're muted, by the way. And I'm managing director of a dairy uh, in Kolapur, Maharashtra, uh, that is in India. And uh, we collect about 1.2 million liters of milk every day. And uh, in September 2018, uh, we had implemented this uh, CST project with the help of NDDB and uh, uh, United UNDP. UNDP and MNRE. UNDP, MNRE, and NDTV. Thank you. Thank you. And next, uh, Subramanian, please. Uh, good evening to all. I am Chandrasekhar from National Dairy Development Board. I am Deputy General Manager with Engineering Services. I have been with NDTV for 32 years now. Uh, so I look forward to see you in the presentation and I'm handing it over back to the host. Thank you. And uh, last but not least in the presentation uh, round, Canon Siva Balan. You are mute, Canon, right? 
It's a pleasure to present our project here in this forum. So we are Unique Biotech. We are the, one of the leading manufacturers of probiotics. And our supply chain is almost close to globally 50 countries. So we implemented this project in the year 2015. So we got a, almost, we depreciated the facility also. More details we'll share in my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, well, now without further delay, we'll start with the first presentation by Jan Michael Kanak. Okay. Uh, over to you, Jan. Whenever you yes. want, just start sharing yes, he, the screen. Here we go. I hope you can you can see it. And I go into the presentation. Oh, I think I have to go into the presentation mode. No, it works. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Hello, everybody. Yes. As said, I, my name is Jan. I work for the German Solar Association, and I'm going to give you a very brief overview over the state of solar heat for industrial processes, which is a result of a project which is called Solar Payback, which has been financed by the German Ministry for the Environment within the International Climate Initiative. And I will give an overview, and JD will then say in the later presentation about the results for India. So what do we actually speak about? When we speak about solar thermal energy for industrial processes, we speak about the use of solar heat for low temperatures, which are usually around 100, up to 150 degrees to medium temperature up to 400 degrees. And despite of having an enormous potential of the use of this, this heat, which is available, we've seen so far around about 930 plants in operation worldwide. Um, yeah, so uh, what is the state or what has it been in the last years? We see that there are a number of countries that have quite a lot of installations and as often in the solar sector here, uh, also in the solar thermal sector, China is leading with uh, like installations of 15 and 26 um, new installations, which are fairly large. Uh, and then we see, see quite a lot of small installations in Mexico, Germany, and then India ranking, ranking fourth in the last two years with fairly mid-sized mid -sized installations. There are a number of other countries uh, that sum up or bring the total number of up to 80 and 90 installations per year. And typically the use of uh, those technologies are within the low and medium temperature industries where you have a lot of heat demand such as food and beverage, textile, chemical or pharmaceutical. And we see some very large plants in mining, but this has so far been an exception. Um, what we also see despite of only around about 80 or 90 projects per year coming online, we see that um, there are a lot of companies, engineering companies, as well as producers of co collectors, for example, or entire systems worldwide, uh, which are available. And this is also a very important output of our, of our activities. It's, it's an overview where you as a potential customer could uh, get to find the right company with the right reference in order to be to, to, to um, install and have, an, have a ship system engineered. Um, but this is not all what we, what we have to offer within the project, which is mainly focusing on Brazil, Mexico, South Africa, and, and India. There's also a lot of marketing material. There's a photo gallery. We have developed an online calculator for um, for uh, calculating the economics of a system for five different sample sites, also five different sites in India and conducted trainings and installers and will put more material online. And in some of the countries we are running media campaigns as well, we seek to or look to support the construction of demo plans, which is not quite sure. So uh, to give you a brief um, like a brief introduction, what are the lessons which we, which we learned from our activities? There is this huge potential, 
but so far it's only in market niches. And especially in the case of Mexico, we can see you need, of course, excellent irradiation, but also expensive or scarce or sometimes restricted conventional fossil fuels. Restricted can be because of their environmental uh, restrictions for emissions, etc. We see the lower the temperature, the better, the easier it becomes to implement a solar thermal process system into, um, into the heat production. And it is up to the suppliers usually, not to the, the customers to guarantee that the, the solar heat is affordable, is reliable, clean, and especially maintenance free. And in addition, nevertheless, it's very difficult in the sector to develop economies of scales um, because every ship plan needs careful engineering and especially complying with quality standards and training is also, also important. And I hope that we'll find out more about that for India in the presentations. We also see some cases of um, energy service companies that finds and run the system. There's a very great market for that. And this has to be because the customer is interested in, yes, cheap heat readily available. And so I'm very much looking forward to listen to the successful examples from India. Thank you very much. And uh, this was my short introduction. Thank you very much, uh, Jan, for your presentation, Deliver at lightning speed. I um, think uh, without any further delay, I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Jaideep Malavia. So whenever you want, Jaideep, just start sharing your screen and unmute yourself so we can hear you as well. Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much. Namaste once again to everybody. If, this if is you, Jaydeep Malbia. Sorry, excuse me, if you can't, there we go. Now it's in full, full screen, perfect, please. All right, fine. So <clears throat> it's a pleasure talking on this platform. I was in charge of the project Solar Payback undertaken for the German Solar Association. And I'll be presenting the India findings on solar payback. Uh, most of my presentations you will hear about SHIP. SHIP stands for solar heat for industrial process. In short, industrial process heating using solar thermal. Very quickly, I'll give the industrial process heat overview. The industrial sector consumes about 38% of the total energy in India and offers hope for conserving up to 25% using renewable energy. So largely this has to be through solar maybe biomass, 15 million tons of fuel oil per year used for heating up to 250 degrees alone in industries, apart from electricity. India has a very good DNA in certain areas or certain regions, which make it viable for solar thermal systems to work at efficiencies between 50 to 70%. The eventual target the government is looking at is to reduce the foundation burden on fuel imports. Hence, the time is to accelerate ship in India. What has been the achievements of ship so far? Close to 32,000 square meter of ship installation has taken place in India under <clears throat> pilot mode as demonstration projects. The only country with the highest number of steam cooking systems, but of course, those are not the subject we are debating. However, this is the only country which has showcased ship projects being implemented across multiple industrial segments, be it a dairy processing, food processing, textiles, chemicals, rubber, or pharmaceutical. I'll skip this slide you had already seen earlier. India is currently the fourth fastest uh, ship implementing country. This is the direct normal incidence map or irradiance map of India. If you see the northernmost tip, which is largely known as the Leh region of Ladakh, and the northern Gujarat and western Rajasthan have very good DNI that offer potential to explore the ship market. Of course, there are other regions where there are moderate, moderate DNI. 
The technology is popular in India, uh, about six of them. I won't read through each of them because you'll be having the presentation. And most of them are successful and there have been some learnings. Now, the solar payback <clears throat> findings show that dairy processing, food processing, pharmaceutical and brewery, if we take combined, these co constitute about 50% of the market demand today. So even if these sectors are tapped, we can make a good beginning for ship development in India. Besides the automobile, component manufacturing, textiles and others. The milk processing, as we are telling, can lead by example. India is today world's largest milk processing country and we'll be shortly achieving a target of about 108 million metric tons. And this can be set as an example to the other identified industry segments, as I mentioned earlier. Every 1 million square meter of concentrated dish saves about 7 million liters of diesel in relatively good DNI on a continuous basis. And this abates about 18,000 tons of CO2 annually. One of the studies undertaken by Unido identifies about 6.45 gigawatt thermal as the potential, which is 124 times the current ship capacity in operation today. So if the total consumption of fuel by industries was 1,267 terawatt hours, just 2% of it could be replaced using the solar heat for industrial process. My last slide, what are the best ideas to accelerate the ship market? I think solar thermal needs a separate recognition under the national solar mission. Uh, because uh, solar PV is today the center stage. Whenever one talks of solar, it's all PV. The renewable heat obligation on similar grounds to uh, renewable electricity obligation must be implemented under the solar heat uh, obligation target. Encourage the energy service company or the ESCO model as it ensures proper life cycle. Subsidy be linked to the performance in terms of either megawatt thermal or million tons of oil equivalent sale. And of course, in order to encourage the manufacturing industry, there must be concessional loan made available. These are some of the examples of the solar heat for industrial process installations in India. So there is more final energy consumption of heat in industries than the electricity consumed. Very important. Thank you very much and Daniwa. Thank you very much, Mr. Jaydeb. If you can please stop sharing your screen. So uh, the next speaker can get ready, who is uh, Chandra Sekhar. Chandra Sekhar, if you, whenever you want, if you can start sharing yeah. your screen and deliver your presentation. And in the meantime, I'd like to remind everyone that you can post your questions on the Q&A box and that you will uh, We'll go through the, the questions. We'll answer some of the questions after all presentations have been delivered. So please, over to you, Chandra Sekhar. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, I, we have to specific, specifically thank the German Solar Association and the Solar Thermal Federation of India to give an opportunity to NDDB to present uh, the activities and initiatives taken by NDDB in dairy sector. So this is my opening slide. I'll, uh, I've got around 15 slides, but I'll try to take it fast. Uh, I'd like to give you an introduction about NDDB. Dr. Varghis Kurian is the founder father of National Dairy Development Board. NDDB has been declared as an institute of national importance by the act of parliament and it is a body corporate. Now established in 1965, NDDB strives for transforming dairying into an instrument for development of India's rural population, especially farmers. Now NDDB launched the Operation Flood with the help of World Bank loan. And the results are to be seen that India is the world's largest milk producing nation. 
Presently, NTDB employs 450 professionals in various fields, which includes in, in dairies and cattle feed plants, in cooperative development, in training, animal health, nutrition, breeding, etc. Uh, we in the engineering services uh, provide consultancy services to from uh, for the projects right from concept to commissioning. And some of the projects uh, which has been executed are Banas Dairy, Chandrai Patna Dairy and Powder Plant, you can see on the right. We also take up cattle feed plant, bypass protein mineral mix, mega semen station, high security animal disease laboratories projects too. Uh, our mission is to maintain energy efficiency, quality, productivity, food safety, environmental safety through latest technology. Now, just coming in, uh, India has decided to reduce the emission intensity by 30 to 35 percent by 2030 as compared to 2005 levels. This is where we all started. On the right, you could see the uh, solar resource map, which has already been shared by the previous presenter. But just, just to show you that there's a lot of area where there's a lot of potential. There are more than 2 million square kilometers where there's very good radiation and this could be utilized. Now the action plan for implementation is to engage with all industry and other sectors for reduction of fuel dependence for thermal requirements. Now what NDDB proactively initiated discussions with Milk Union and Dairy Federations for implementation of solar thermal systems. So a meeting was called I'll show you with the next slide. Uh, we had a stakeholder meeting organized in November 2015. And it was decided in that meeting that we, the, the dairy industry will implement solar thermal in all possible dairies as much as possible. We had, uh, we received good support from MNRE, UNDP, and we received financial support also in terms of subsidy. Uh, you know, to take the project forward for its implementation, we had to do some important decisions, uh, whether you know, we require to deliver the thermal energy in terms of hot water or steam, and how to make this uh, entire system cost-effective and commercially viable. So these were the, you know, the real challenges in front of us. So we had to first understand how the thermal requirements are utilized in a dairy. So we had to make a, a, a comparison of the low heat, medium heat, and the high heat requirements. Uh, to our surprise, we found that more than 65% uh, of the thermal energy requirements were for low heat, around 80 to 85 degrees was what we found. And the milk powder, which is the high heat, was only 20%. So what we actually decided is to go and plug the low hanging fruits get to that 80, 85 degrees hot water requirements. And that's what we proceeded with. So uh, what are the achievements uh, in this 15 projects which we did in 2017? We added around 180,000 kilocalorie per day of heat generation, around 8,000 square meters of concentrated area were installed. We did the 15 projects with a total investment of around 16 crores. Uh, there's an equivalent furnace oil saving of 678 metric tons per annum, equivalent reduction of CO2 emissions by 2,488 metric tons. So what we could see in our installations is there is a reduction of 5 to 15 percent in the fuel expenditure because of solar thermal intervention. Finally, NDDB did all these 15 projects on pro bono basis. Uh, just to give you where did we do this, we had six projects installations in Kolhapur, around 2,700 square meters of aperture area, three projects in Punjab, one in Gujarat, three in Karnataka. So I am actually going to the next slide. Uh, there are some photos uh, of the installations in Kolhapur. The top four uh, photos are from the chilling centers, the bottom two are from the dairy. We had installations in Karnataka too, in Bangalore, at Balari, at Bijapur. Uh, there are three installations in Punjab, Mohali, Jalandhar, Ludhiana. 
just to discuss more as in a case study we had one installation at chandgarh chilling center uh, where we did a 15 day performance trial this is a 5 lakh kilo calorie system uh, we could get the radiations were good we could get 5 lakh 80000 kilo calories heat output during that performance period this resulted in a furnace oil saving of around 3000 rupees a day this is our new installation which you have done in upur dairy which is a 14 lakh kilo calorie system which is just uh, is ready for commissioning but then because of the lockdown we could not commission but we will do it as soon as possible so the future of implementation would be is to make aware the small and medium sized dairy units about the benefits of harnessing solar energy NDTB has made the implementation of solar thermal as a part of its project implementation in greenfield and brownfield projects uh, we are targeting that we can install around uh, 350 you know installations across india given the uh, support there are some constraints uh, we need to bring down the cost of the concentrating technology for now there are uh, limited options and very few concentrating technologies manufactured in india which probably we need to increase and then we need to give confidence uh, we should have confidence on the technology to give us consistent thermal energy uh, for its life span uh, thank you very much and that's the end of my presentation namaste thank you thank you very much san chandra sekar for your presentation if you could stop sharing your screen and then um now is the turn of the next speaker who is uh ganeka the tatri so whenever you are ready please uh so you you need to stop do you, do you remember how to stop sharing your screen okay there we go <clears throat> hello my name is uh, ganekar my name is uh, ghanekar and i'm ma i'm managing director of a uh, gokul dairy in kolhapur which is in maharashtra state in india and uh, i first uh, thank uh, the organizers for giving me an opportunity to uh, present our case in front of you <clears throat> this is my first first slide <clears throat> uh in september 2018 we started uh, this uh, cst project that is concentrated solar thermal project with the help of nddb and undp as mr chandrashekhar explained in his presentation there was a meeting and um, uh, we we raised our hand and we said that uh, okay we are ready to implement it and we would like to do the job thoroughly and uh, this is how we started uh, we have a main dairy in kolhapur and we have a satellite dairy uh, nearby and there are uh, four chilling centers so in all these places we implemented the cst projects in gokul dairy uh, the cst area is 1350 Uh, square meters whereas in shiro it is 450 square meters in tavrewadi it is 225 in all those chilling centers the area is uh, same uh, when it comes to net investment which is in rupees um, the gokul dairy investment is 26.5 million whereas in shiro the investment is 9.1 million rupee and in tavrewadi gogwe gadinglas and bidri other chilling centers the investment is around 5.6 5.4 5.5 so in this way the total investment comes to 57.6 million rupees uh, during those days we were using uh, furnace oil and in only one place we were using briquet and in bidri also we were using briquets uh, whereas now we have stopped using furnace oil in all those places and we are using uh, briquet only so uh, at that point of time uh, the payback period was around 4 to 5 years and uh, that is how 
the project went on. In the second slide, you see the Gokul Dairy information. The installed capacity is uh, 3 million kilocalories per day, and it was commissioned in September 2018. The hot water generated maximum is 80 degrees centigrade. The aperture area is 1,350 square meters, and uh, there are number of collectors are 450, and the total investment is uh, 26.5 million rupees. And the saving is uh, around uh, 115,385 kgs of uh, furnace oil per year. In the Shiro satellite dairy, the installed capacity is 1 million kilocalorie per day, and the aperture area is 450 square meters. Number of collectors is 150. Cost of project is 9.1 million rupees, and the fuel saving is 90,000 90, kgs uh, of briquette per year. <clears throat> At the chilling centers, there are four chilling centers. So all put together, the capacity is 0.5 million kilocalorie per day. And the aperture area is uh, 225 square meter. Number of collectors in each place are 75. Net investment for each project is 5.6 million rupees. And the fuel saving uh, is uh, 445,000 uh, kgs of briquette per year for each project, each chilling center. The overall achievements uh, in one slide, uh, Gokul Dairy, uh, the equivalent steam generation, that is kgs per day, is in, in case of Gokul Dairy, it is 4,500. In case of Shiro Satellite Dairy, uh, 1,083. In case of Changad, that is Tavrewadi chilling centers, 540. In case of Gogwe chilling centers and other chilling centers, it is same, that is 540. And in total, uh, 7,743 kgs of uh, equivalent steam generation per day. And this is a real-time performance and total carbon dioxide reduction is uh, equivalent to 3.7 tons per day for all these uh, six projects. The funding uh, scenario is something like this. The total project cost for us was 57.6 million rupees, uh, whereas NDDB loan was 70%, interest rate was 5.5%, and UNDP and Ministry of uh, Renewable Energy subsidy was 30% of the project cost. But initially, we spent all that 30%, and later on, uh, we claimed the subsidy, which we have received. And that is how the project project funding was done. <clears throat> so there are a few suggestions. Uh, number one suggestion is that the supplier should uh, operate the system for one year, whosoever it is, and should train the local operators during that period, because it is very important that the system continues to run forever. And for that, the training of the local operators is necessary. And if the supplier remains there for a period of one year, that is a kind of a support uh, which uh, naturally we would need. Second point is uh, the solar collectors should be clean, need, need to be clean uh, every day. And uh, some record also needs to be maintained every day. So if this is done properly, then only we could uh, look back and we can study where we have gone wrong. So therefore, this is, a, this is very essential in, from our point of view. The third point is uh, solar collectors installation should be at a sufficient height. So it should not be, you know, near to the, not only near to the ground, but uh, even if it is on the rooftop, uh, it is, uh, it needs to be at an elevated place so that the cleaning could be done properly. That is our experience. And then the RO water for primary system and soft water for secondary system uh, needs to be provided. We cannot use the raw water directly. There are certain recommendations. <clears throat> uh, the, there needs to be a single window. In, in our case, uh, it was a National Dairy Development Board of India. And I think that it was uh, very helpful for us because we need not have to go to MNRE separately or the UNDP separately to you know, follow our project. We went to NDDB, NDDB, uh, we submitted our project, NDDB approved it, and that's it. 
and NEDB continued to monitor and um, gave us a, a bit of guidance as well. Second point is additional subsidy to be considered by MNRE. Uh, at present, they are providing some 50%, 30% subsidy. And uh, we feel that uh, there could be projects, you know, which are not, um, uh, which, which may not be money rich projects and may, they may not be able to uh, invest themselves the amount and therefore the subsidy amount needs to be increased from government of India. And the subsidy of central and state government should go directly to end implementing agency once the project is approved by NDDP. So there, therefore, you know, for otherwise what happens in a government system, where you have to each time go with a, you know, uh, proposal for release of the check and that becomes a very cumbersome process. And then last uh, uh, suggestion is that um, if this whole project could be connected with some income tax benefit for, for the company, and uh, if there could be some reduction in the uh, tax, and uh, the interest rate, if it could be reduced further than the implementation of the project, particularly for weak uh, areas, uh, financially weak projects could be uh, a welcome gesture. Uh, this is what is my presentation. Thank, Thank you very much uh, for giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much, Ganeka, for your presentation. So. Um, before uh, the next panelist gets ready, I'd like to remind everyone that they can send their questions through the Q&A box. So I can see there are quite a few there and I can see some of uh, the speakers have been answering some of them in uh, some of the questions in writing as well. So, um, well, our next speaker is Mr. Kanan Sivabala and uh, he will be, uh, the, the floor is uh, yours now, uh, Kanan, if you'd like to present. The greetings of the day to all. Okay, I, I can see the uh, the presentation is on full screen. So. Yeah, greetings of the day to all. Uh, initially, I would like to thank to all participants who gave their valuable time to present here for this forum. And special thanks to organizer. I'm Shivalan Kanan from Unique Biotech Committed Hyderabad, India. We are one of the leading manufacturers of uh, probiotics, enzymes, and nutraceuticals. Our vision is to make a probiotic better than and nutraceutical. Vision is to make the product stockable to all levels of citizens. This is how the project concept uh, when we start to discuss with uh, supply. The thing is, as initially uh, the people explained the project, like we can just incorporate this CST system directly to the boiler the water without having any stop or maybe delay time in our current process or operation. So that's how the first attraction we have got into this project. Then, as we show, like economics, um, when they explained like a three to five years with the MNRE and UNDP subsidy. And heart of the system of CST is like a uh, the mirror, which is having a life cycle of 15 to 20 years. If it is a solar grey or if any other products, then it will be mixed to five years. Then after five years, the project can be supported by UNDP GDF for any types of like maintenance or innovation. And moreover, it's eco-friendly product systems, so it can reduce the carbon footprint. That's how the project concept we bought into, and then we just say like, yes, we can go ahead into this project. This is a project details. We have implemented this project with 540 square meters, six numbers of dishes of parabolite. Uh, the process can give 30 meter cube of vulgar feed water at temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. The total investment cost of project is about 13 million Indian rupees. It's, it's again, get subsidy of 4.86 million from MNRE and UNDP. This can reduce almost 50 tons of furnace oil and it can come down the 100 tons of carbon dioxide. And all the data can be accessed online. So any process improvement or any downtime, we can be able to calculate and we can be able to improve the process at any point of time. The 
process of advantage is that it's completely safety systems. It, is, it involves just manpower interventions. So like even the charging or you go over the high level, high temperatures, all those things it can be taken into auto mode. And it can be synchronized to the our revolver feed water without having any interventions. And during the sunshine, we can able to use our normal revolver feed water with the preheated system. So this is the main advantage of this project. And as the eco-friendly system for carbon dioxide reduction is because we reduced it drastically the problems or the conversion of the thing it can be shown in the next slide. Mr. Cannon, sorry to, yeah. to interrupt you for a second, but is is can be a little bit hard to hear you, so if you could get closer to the microphone. Um, is, it, is it audible now? Is it okay? Now it's better, but yeah, before okay. it was a little bit, you, it was, you know, not clear, but now it's, it's much okay. better. Okay, I, I think it's much better to me, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the performance summary of uh, short grains. It saved almost in the year of 2017, we saved close to like 43 tons of hardness oil, which, which was benefit of almost 1.5 million Indian rupees. So at this rate, actually, the project has been depreciated in the year of five and a half years. But only thing is that furnace oil cost has been included in this like a thirty rupees. So there is a huge restrictions in furnace oil against the food. So in the year 2015, it was almost like a 25, 30 rupees, and you can see it's up and down. And now really a lot of uncertainties in terms of furnace oil cost. This is a glimpse of plants with like uh, six parabolic dishes, and this is our entry. And you can see the performance comes like uh, there is a huge gap in between the input and yield because we are getting close to like uh, two lakh calories, and our transformation is only like a one lakh. This thing is that gives almost 50 to 60 percent efficiency, and at the rate of almost three to five DNI every day. This is a monthly data, so we have to more focus on the heat transfer and mass transfer. Its operation. The key takeaway in this thing, as I told, the main is in the heat transfer. So the maintenance of the parabolite is a key factor, and we have to wash it as a previous person told. Actually, we have to maintain that the parabolite, the mirrors in proper way, and it requires a huge amount of water that we have to take into the consideration. The recycle of water has to be worked out. The energy loss we have to address, we have to study more about the thing, and maybe the, the people can help the MNRU or other people can help it out like the thing is how the energy loss can be addressed. And maintenance, of course, that's a major thing. And the economics, when coming to the economics, there will be a huge gap in economics as a projector. That's the thing is like a projection thing, unless for your cost. And the alternative fuel sources like availability of the CNG, flicker, that will impact the economics very well. And of course, people sits in metro areas, they have to consider the land walking. In our project, we have sacrificed almost 900 square meters to incorporate 540 square meter of the project. So that we have to consider into the accounts in the depreciation of the back period. And comes to the act of God, due to natural calamities, this like easily it can get damaged of things, so the precautions, and we have to take more about the how to safeguard the system. And the kinds of support by the insurance has to be more radiant, has to be great in that one. Of course, we also lost the cost to like a 190 square meter one parabolite in one year back from huge rainfall. So this is the more factors we have to concentrate and the rest actually the project will be way back within the fact of five years. And of course, we already depreciated our facility which we incorporated in 2015. By 2020, we got our money back with subsidy. Thank you very much. Back to post. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cannon, for your uh, presentation. So, well, now it's the time for the questions and answers session. So, um, I think we have received a number of questions. We have, we have received a technical as well as uh, more um, commercial questions. Um, there is, um, um, you know, there, there was a, a question that it's being answered already, but I think it's one that is in, in most people's uh, minds, which is, uh, you know, that the uh, use of solar heat for industrial processes in India seems to be at its, uh, seems to be beginning just now. So um, what can be done to, uh, for more of these systems to be used? I don't know who would like to, to start answering this question. 
but not all at the same oh. time. Okay, Jai Deep. Yeah, I did. Uh, could you could you be specific to the question? I think I, I answered. I tried answering most of them, but uh, uh, see, uh, the solar process heat technologies are evolving in India. We are under the learning curve, but now I think there is sufficient confidence gathered on <clears throat> whatever the drawbacks are associated. So I think uh, the time is appropriate to explore more and more and accelerate. It's just that there is a lack of awareness. Okay, so the main yeah. the main thing that is required is more um, awareness. So yes. uh, industrial companies are not really uh, they don't know that these technology is available necessarily. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And uh, also to add one point that. Uh, it's uh, it should not be compared to solar photovoltaics. The two are two different applications. Mm -hmm. So you have to take a call on your priority based on the available area, whether you would like to go for the solar power or solar heat. I think often people tend to compare the two and both have different applications. They have their <clears throat> they have niche application. They have their strengths in their own fields. And um, also, um, you know, I think there is a question. There are many questions here. I'm trying to summarize, uh, you know, all of the questions. There are many questions on the subsidies available in India for this type of technology. Is there anywhere a website or a resource that you could refer our audience to so they can see it there? Because I can imagine there would be a number of schemes or, um, or options that you could uh, used to access uh, some kind of subsidy. So do, uh, are you aware, any of you, of any any place where they, this information could be found so we could share it with the audience? They can contact the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy because that's the agency basically who would decide on the subsidy program. So at least we won't have any idea so far on this. Mm -hmm. So the subsidy program hasn't been, is not, uh, is not operating now? We don't know yet. We don't know. Okay. They, can, they can reply. So probably, okay. I think they can contact them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, um, you know, I would like to hear from the uh, people who, in the, you know, the speakers. So, uh, you know, such as uh, Ganeka and, and Mr. Cannon, who have used... Uh, concentrating um, solar heat or solar heat, uh, you know, why have you decided to, uh, to go for this technology? Yes, uh, um, uh, Mr. Ganeko, you are silent. Yeah. So if you can. Actually, actually, just Hello. Hello, basically, uh, we were not very much aware as uh, was rightly pointed out by Jaydeep. We were not aware about uh, uh, this system. We went for a meeting in NDDB and there uh, when uh, we were told about this particular project, uh, we really could uh, latch on onto that project. And uh, so therefore, uh, what I feel that the out there uh, in the at the industry level, at the field level, there could be a possibility that uh, people simply do not know what this technology is. That is number one. Second thing is that uh, the uh, the plant manager or the factory manager uh, doesn't know how to implement this uh, project. Third thing is that uh, there is always a question of finance because the uh, the board of directors would always ask, uh, we do, or would always say that where is the money. For example, recently uh, I put forward uh, one such uh, project uh, in front of my board of directors, and they uh, they said that uh, we'll uh, we'll wait for some more time, keep it pending, and oh, it's a very big project you are bringing in for finance. So I wanted to go in for a solar electricity generation project, and. Uh, then I then I learned a lesson and then I started putting forward small, small projects in front of the board of directors. And they started uh, mm -hmm. approving that. 
and that is how ultimately mm-hmm. i got around uh, my projects so mm-hmm. what i am trying to say is that finance is an issue uh, where you know such projects are innovative projects and then this is not a priority for the board of directors for board of directors the main business is the priority and they always say that uh, there is no money for these projects so if uh, if a bank comes forward or if a organization like nddb undp or uh, government of india comes forward then um, there is a carrot hanging somewhere so naturally one latches on to that and then the project starts and once you get a good experience out of that project so uh, then you can go back to the board of directors and show them the results and convince them that yes there is a saving number one and then uh, another thing uh, which i have learned from this project is that uh, even in the dairy industry as mr chandrashekhar rightly pointed out that to our surprise what we find that uh, everywhere we don't require steam and uh, these boilers but uh, we kind of got into habit of you know installing a putting a boiler wherever there is a uh, requirement of heat and then using steam instead of hot water but there are several places right now within the dairy like for example at a chilling center level uh, i would urge you right here to mr chandrashekhar to even go further and find out uh, whether really do we require a boiler at a chilling center level because chilling center is a place where you only chill milk you don't heat milk and when you don't heat milk why do you require a boiler over there you can have a cst project maybe a bigger project and get rid of uh, these boilers at least at the chilling centers and uh, places like bulk milk coolers at the village level so there is a huge scope for uh, in my opinion for this cst for example uh, we have uh, 1250 villages and we are installing uh, uh, bulk milk coolers in every village so every village we will have some uh, water heating system and uh, we will you maybe somebody would use coal somebody would use generator somebody would use uh, um, uh, wood or whatever and uh, that is unnecessary wastage of uh, energy and therefore if we have a cst system so therefore in one place on pilot basis uh, with the help of a local scientist uh, we have installed a, a cst system and uh, where we are saving 50000 uh, rupees per year out of that system and it is successful and it it meets all the needs of uh, hot water at a village level so this is it this is what i want to say that there is a huge scope but because there is no awareness because there is no proper funding available or because there is no technical guidance available uh, at at an appropriate place there is no one single organization as in case of luckily in case of nddb we have national dairy development board you know at least thinking in that di- in that direction but in every sector do we have that kind of organization which is thinking and implementing and if it is then uh, there is a huge scope and still so much uh, work to be done thank you very much uh, mr garak i think chandra sekhar yeah. you want to say some or who who wants to intervene sorry no in our case actually we are just trying to explore the uh, energy saving Because now currently in the current industry practice, actually we have to save the energy. That's a major cost. Uh, it can become significantly down. So when we try to use the condensate, like a steam condensate, to tap it and then give you as a boiler feed water. So then after a certain point of time, we reach the maximum consumption of the condensate from the plant. So once we think about the how to do it, we are using the solar solar panel, and then we can get to generate the boiler feed water. So that gives you a lot of uh, significant crack in the pharmaceutical cost and any other way. Even it is equivalent to the bricket thing. So it's feasible with subsidy or without subsidy. This kind of project can is feasible to execute in the right direction. In my side, I, even I captured the energy balance. So of course, until now we are not able to get the energy balance more than 60 to 70 percent. It really if you strike to close to like a 25 to 80 percent, then the payback period will be good enough. it may come down to maybe four to five years without subsidy also so currently we depreciated our facility with the subsidy five years the same thing can come down without subsidy also five years if we increase the energy efficiency that means a heat transfer from the thermic fluid to hot water system that's the most area now we are focusing to bring down significant impact on the plant thank you 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Cannon. I see we have, well, um, almost 30 questions here. I don't think we'll have time to answer all of them. So what I will tell everyone in the audience is that we will share the questions with the panelists and then uh, they'll be able to uh, answer your questions uh, in their own time. Um, I hope they have answered some of the questions in bulk. Um, but I think now uh, I believe that uh, you want to show a video. I think it's time to show uh, that video. Anna, when you are ready, please uh, show the, the video. मानव जाति के भविष्य की दिशा का निर्धारण सतत नवीनीकरण करता है तकनीकी ऊर्जा से भरपूर उपकरणों और प्रणालियों के माध्यम से उत्पादकता में इजाफा किया है थोड़े समय तक फायदे देने की जगह पर्यावरण अनुकूल बदलाव लंबे समय तक के लिए लाभ देते हैं भारत पूरे साल भारी मात्रा में सौर ऊर्जा प्राप्त करता है एनडीडीबी ने डेरियों में इस सौर ऊर्जा प्रणाली को लागू करने की पहल की है डेरियों में कैन और क्रेट की सफाई सीआईपी तथा बॉयलर के लिए काफी मात्रा में 80 डिग्री के तापमान का गर्म पानी का इस्तेमाल किया जाता है पानी को गर्म करने के लिए बॉयलर में फर्नेस ऑयल या कोयले का ईंधन के रूप में प्रयोग किया जाता है ऐसे पारंपरिक ऊर्जा स्रोत काफी प्रदूषण फैलाते हैं और पर्यावरण के लिए एक खतरा है इनके रख रखाव तथा सुरक्षा की जिम्मेदारी एक अलग चुनौती है एम की मदद से डेयरी बोर्ड ने भारत की कुछ चुनिंदा डेयरियों में कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सोलर थर्मल टेक्नोलॉजी को लागू करने का निर्णय लिया है इसके लिए तीन सी टेक्नोलॉजी को चुना गया है टू एक्सेस ट्रैक पैराबोलॉइड डिश सिंगल एक्सेस ट्रैक ट्रफ और नॉन ट्रैकिंग कॉम्पाउंड पैराबोलिक कॉन्सेंट्रेटर कोल्हापुर में स्थित गोकुल डेरी रोजाना 12 लाख लीटर दूध और अन्य दुग्ध उत्पाद प्रोसेस करते हैं यह सफाई के काम के लिए करीब 6 लाख लीटर गर्म पानी इस्तेमाल किया जाता है पानी को गर्म करने के लिए डेरी रोजाना चौरासी हजार रुपए ईंधन पर खर्च करती है नॉन ट्रैकिंग सीपीसी कंसंट्रेटिंग प्रणाली के तीन सेट इमारत पर लगाए गए हैं हर सेट प्रतिदिन 10 लाख किलो कैलोरी की ऊर्जा देता है थर्मल प्रयोगों के लिए यह 80 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड के तापमान का गर्म पानी मुहैया कराता है सी प्रणाली का एपचर एरिया 1350 मीटर वर्ग का है और यह प्रतिदिन 30 लाख किलो कैलोरी ऊर्जा पैदा करता है जो डेरी के रोजाना की कुल ऊर्जा खपत का लगभग 8 प्रतिशत है सब्सिडी और कर्ज वापसी के 5 साल की अवधि के हिसाब से डेरी को सालाना 41 लाख रुपए से ज्यादा की बचत होगी तो हमने एनडीडीबी की सहायता से कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड सोलर थर्मल इंस्टॉलेशन ये परियोजना कार्यान्वित की है और इसके लिए लगभग पाँच करोड़ पचहत्तर लाख जितनी लागत लगी है हमारी मेन डेयरी जो है गोकुल डेयरी वो और हमारे जो शीतकरण केंद्र है तो ऐसे छह जगह हमारी जो इकाइयाँ हैं तो इनके जो छत है इस छत के ऊपर हमने ये सौर ऊर्जा के पैनल बिठाए तो लगभग चार पाँच वर्षों में ये जो हमारा पाँच करोड़ पचहत्तर लाख खर्चा लगा है ये वापस हमें मिल जाएगा और ये प्रणाली पूरी पूरी तरह फ्री हमें हो जाएगी लुधियाना मिल्क प्लांट रोज तकरीबन पांच लाख लीटर दूध प्रोसेस करता है कुल एक हजार चवालीस मीटर वर्ग एपचर एरिया का सीपीसी दो अलग अलग भागों में लगाया गया है ये प्रणाली रोजाना पच्चीस लाख किलो कैलोरी ऊर्जा प्रदान करती है क्योंकि सीपीसी अपने फ्रेम पर लगा हुआ एक हल्के वजन का कॉन्सेंट्रेटर है छत की खाली जगह पर इनको कतार में आसानी से लगाया जा सकता है इस प्रोजेक्ट से ईंधन की सालाना बचत 33 लाख रुपए की होती है पानी गर्म करने के अलावा 
सौर ऊर्जा का उपयोग बिजली उत्पादन करने के लिए भी होता है एम मेहसाणा में 50 किलोवाट सोलर फोटोवोल्टेक रूफटॉप प्रणाली लगाई गई है सौर ऊर्जा से उत्पादित बिजली सीधे राज्य की ग्रिड में जाती है और इस बिजली की बिक्री से हर महीने पैतालीस हजार रूपए की बचत होती है वर्तमान में रूफटॉप सौर संयंत्र की कर्ज वापसी की अवधि लगभग चार साल है ग्रामीण स्तर की सहकारी समितियों में बल्क मिल्क कूलर को पावर देने के लिए पांच किलोवाट सोलर फोटोवोल्टेक सिस्टम का उपयोग किया जाता है एक बार दूध ठंडा हो जाने पर अतिरिक्त उत्पादित बिजली को ग्रिड में भेजा जाता है इससे हर महीने बिजली के बिल में तीन हजार रुपए की बचत होती है और ये न केवल डिजी सेट की आवश्यकता को कम करता है बल्कि हरित ऊर्जा की वृद्धि को भी प्रभावित करता है सोलर थर्मल से आगे बढ़कर हमने ग्रीन बिल्डिंग बनाने की शुरुआत की है जिसमें पानी ऊर्जा व अन्य संसाधनों का कुशलतापूर्वक इस्तेमाल किया जाएगा इससे यूटिलिटी वेस्ट कम होगा और पर्यावरण को नुकसान से बचाया जा सकेगा हमारे देश के डेयरी उद्योग में सौर्य शक्ति का उपयोग या प्रयोग की असीम संभावनाएं हैं सौर्य शक्ति का एक टेक्नोलॉजी कंसनट्रेटेड सोलर टेक्नोलॉजी हमने देश के विभिन्न प्रांतों में उसका प्रयोग किया है एक साल के अंदर हमने पंद्रह इकाइयों में इसका प्रयोग करके ये देखा है कि इन डेयरियों को विशेष लाभ मिला है उनकी खर्चा में कमी आई है जिसका सीधा लाभ किसानों तक पहुंचा है आज मैं देश के डेयरी इकाइयों को ये अनुरोध करता हूं कि वे आगे आए और ये स्वच्छ और कम खर्चे वाले प्रयोग का प्रयोग को अपनाएं और उसका लाभ उठाएं और किसानों को भी पहुंचाएं। देश में 300 से ज्यादा सहकारी डेयरी हैं। इनमें ऊर्जा शक्ति की जरूरत का कुछ अंश भी अगर सीएसटी टेक्नोलॉजी के द्वारा पूरा किया जाए तो न केवल सहकारी संस्थानों का कार्बन फुटप्रिंट घटेगा बल्कि अच्छा खासा आर्थिक लाभ भी होगा एनडीडीबी अब ऊर्जा समाधान की एक ऐसी क्रांति कायम कर रहा है जो सतत और पर्यावरण के अनुकूल है यह बदलाव सहकारी डेयरियों के लिए छोटा ही सही परंतु जलवायु परिवर्तन की दिशा में एक ठोस कदम है Well um thank you uh very much to um everyone in the audience who's been with us uh for the entire hour and uh, who's uh, watched this webinar and thank you to all our speakers uh today <clears throat> so uh, um for the the presentations um so uh to everyone in the uh, in the audience I'd like to uh remind you that you will get the recording of his webinar and the presentations early uh next week and um well if you like this uh, webinars on or similar webinars you can go to our website atainsights.com uh, so uh thank you very much to um everyone and uh, well see you next time thank you <laughs>